name is Oleg Geshen. I, as Brian said some time ago, I just decided to investigate what I can do to build my own instruments because when I looked how much Dynan Skyview cost these days for my RV12, it gave me heart attack. So I thought, yeah, I gotta do something about it. And it is possible to do something because you don't really need all this fancy stuff to fly RV12. So, and I actually put a little bit of a challenge for myself. I thought I'll build it for under 100 bucks. Well, that is American bucks, not our bucks. You can't build anything for 100 Amer uh, Australian dollars. So, and this is how it ended up. So I spent for the whole exercise, I spent a little bit more than $100 because I had to kind of play with different bits and pieces. But what you can see here is $95. So I'll give everyone to play with it. So, and here, you can just give to everyone. Just play with it and I don't know. If you break it, that's good because uh, that way I'll find out what's wrong with it. So uh, basically uh, the idea was to give, to make it a legal VFR instrument. So you get your uh, airspeed indicator, altimeter, vertical spin indicator, the head, heading, uh, artificial horizon, slip ball. There is no turn indicator, but artificial horizon my understanding goes instead. Yeah. Uh, and there is a clock that you have to have according to VFR rules. And I also put uh, the flight timer that basically kicks in once you reach certain speed, like say your aircraft lifts off at, I don't know, 40 knots. So you can set 40 knots and your clock starts at that point. And once you stop, it basically uh, stops the clock. So you kind of know uh, how much time you flew. And it also has the G meter. I don't know, because I, because I could. It, you don't really need it, but because I could. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, maybe maybe later. So I also put a roll indicator and the pitch indicator in numbers. I don't know, because you don't really need artificial horizon in VFR aircraft. And to make it, to make artificial horizon look good, look, look the same as, say, Dynan, it's really hard on black and white screen. So I thought I'll put numbers instead that gives you a little bit more perception of your position. All right, and uh, we probably should set uh, Q&H. It's 1019, I think, today in, in Moravian. Uh, just press, press this. So the control, uh, there, is, there is a control over there. Uh, uh, you press. Uh, it's pretty much like on Dynan. Yeah. Uh, you press and you adjust. There you go. Yeah, 42 feet, almost there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's basically the device. That was the whole idea and that's what I've built so far. So how, how does it all work and what's inside? Inside there is a uh, Arduino Mega 2560 main board. It's like, it's like your computer main board with a CPU processor and memory and everything in it with lots of uh, connectors to connect your devices of all kind. You can connect whatever you want and it's fantastic a piece of engineering specifically built for robotics, drones, for all kind of automation things. Uh, and I actually, I brought one board here, just want everyone to see how it looks like. And I think it's my standing with the camera can see. So it's like a, basically just a blank computer where you can program it to do anything. 
Yeah, so it's... As long as you can connect to the right thing. It's, it's basically... <laughs> it's this kind of thing, this little thing. That's, that's the board. And it has everything in it. It costs seven bucks. What? Seven dollars. That is delivered to your home. Seven dollars. Yeah, so, and it is four times faster than my first IBM XT computer when I was young and handsome. Yeah, yeah you can just, yeah, show people around. So on yeah. that you've done the graphics on that, that's all your work? Graphics, yes, uh, software uh, is my work. Okay. Yeah, but the, the hardware is this, it's pretty much this. Uh, well, this board doesn't have any sensor on it, it's just memory and uh, the CPU power. It has, Alex, uh, yeah? With, with what you're handing around that box there, yeah. oh, I didn't see the devices on the back. Is that where you're It's a, uh, it's a connector for, okay. for your pito and static. Right, so when we sent an altitude change then, that was just through the, the, yeah. the static port. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite sensitive. sensitive. If you just move it one foot up, yeah, you can see the number up. changing up. Move it up, John, and you'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so it doesn't have sensors. So sensors come separate, and uh, the most ex expensive sensor here is the gyro and magnetometer. It's um, and is that in there now? It's inside there now. Wow. Yeah, that's how why artificial yeah. horizon works and the magnetic thing works. Uh, the when. When I was building it, I didn't really want to spend a lot of time with soldering iron. I just wanted to build off, like, off-the-shelf components. So this little device on the left, it's, um, it's a board that has all the components in it, including the gyro and everything. That little black thingy in the middle is actually the chip that does all the magic. Uh, and all the components around it just to support, and this is evaluation board from um, Atmel. It costs $51, uh, and all you need to do is just put the power to it, and that's about it, and uh, hook up to uh, the main board. Uh, same story with differential pressure sensor for airspeed indicator and altimeter. Uh, the problem with altimeter thing is it just comes like that, like a little board, uh, and you need to build an enclosure for it. So I build it off two caps, like from the bottles, like, you know, the plastic bottles, plastic caps, put them together and put this thing inside. It's that tiny. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, I actually, during the break, I pull it apart, you'll see what's inside. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I actually not really happy with the f with this design because it's just too much glue that may fall apart eventually. I just want something more stable for the working uh, version, like the one that I'm going to put on a plane, but for, it's good for prototype. Display was actually the biggest challenge here because it's really hard to find good display that um, you can uh, you can see in bright sunlight. And you have a lot of bright sunlight if you have like all like the bubble, bubble canopy and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So I played with uh, a few color screens and none of them gave me something that, that I wanted so I could see what's on the screen. So I resorted to black and white uh, classic LCD with pretty much the, just the backlight if you have a lot of uh, light from the sun, you can't see the backlight, but the screen is actually clearly seen. It's actually even better on a bright light really? than it's with backlight. Uh, so it's a really good screen. The only problem with the screen is with the display, it's very inert. Like, you know, it, the picture, if your number's changing very quickly, it be, they become blurry. Like, it's the same screen as on your like watch, like uh, this kind of LCD watch. Um, but the good thing is it's cheap. Uh, it's about like $25 or so. Uh, uh, color screens, the good ones, they're very, very expensive. They, like 
could cost you like two, three hundred dollars for good screen, just for good display, and that would defeat the purpose of the exercise. So, but I'm could really happy. Your screen for us more mature colors. That's as big as it can get. I, I actually I am very mature that way too. Uh, okay, so basically, uh, all you need uh, just to add the screen, add. Uh, four champagne corks to it. It's a very important component of this thing. <laughs> and you get your uh, ifis. <laughs> you have to drink the champagne first. Yeah, you have to get, drink champagne first. So, yeah, basically here you see all the components that include, well, the battery is not there, but uh, the battery, uh, you can put power through USB or through 9 volt or 12 volt battery. It has internal voltage regulator that basically makes it, you can put any uh, voltage from, I think, 5 o'clock to 20 volts. Really? From, from tw 5 volts to 20 volts. Yeah. And it only uh, consumes about 125 uh, milliampers of current. So it's very economical. So you can run it off on battery. So say if you fly a trike, you don't really have much electric circuits on your trike. Yeah. Uh, so you can just plug in battery and fly. Well, you probably don't need artificial horizon there either. But um, yeah, so uh, the way uh, the whole thing works inside, this is uh, on the right hand side, you see the display upside down. So it's face down. Um, and the board in the middle is just a junction board. It's prototype board at the moment. It's just thin like this. Cost like 10 cents or so. Uh, and you just put uh, the connectors, uh, like this row of black things, pins. You just solder them and put one like the board on top of the display and on other side of this board goes the main board and it all sticks together. You just run wires between yeah. the pins and that's it. Uh, in the future, well, probably nearest future, I'm going to put, uh, like, make proper uh, printed circuit board and hook it up properly. It will, it will be much more reliable because it gave me some headache Occasionally because of bad soldering. So, yeah, so, and that's pretty much it. That's, you can just hook it up to a plane and fly it. Uh, it has uh, the menu to adjust uh, speed, your takeoff speed for your flight timer, the time itself, your UTC time, if you want, to local time. I'm going to put up some um, few few other things in there. Uh, so, well, first of all, I'm going to test it in the car. So I, I'm building a little bit of kind of cradle for, for it in the car to make sure it works in the heat, it works in, in vibration and all that kind of stuff. See how the data goes. Uh, I'm going to put up uh, flight data recorder there as well, <coughs> just a little SD card, like you're using the cameras. Yeah. So it would record your really? airspeed and all that, all this kind of data. It's pretty easy to do. I just didn't bother with it at the start because I wanted everything else to work. Uh, airspeed indicator is currently analog there. It's pretty good, does its job, but I would like digital one much more uh, more, s not so much sensitive, more accurate, yeah. Uh, also, same story with static. I don't really like uh, this thing that I built with two caps of the bottles. Uh, so I want proper one. Uh, and uh, those two things will set me back by 50 bucks each if I get the good ones from Honeywell, I think, the company that makes them. They, makes, they make equipment for proper avionics and stuff. So, and yeah, replace this uh, board with PCB. And uh, the software will be available on my website, which is 
uh, experimentalavionics.com. So you can go there. You can actually find more details about this project there and a few other projects I'm yeah, going to. You got that to arrange on your desk. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, experimentalavionics.com. No? But I'll maybe dot com and uh, so and I'm going to put up some uh, like settings whether you want your airspeed in knots or miles per hour kilometers per hour because actually uh, a lot of uh, inspiration I found on European websites on guys in Europe do such things a lot uh, for their flying machines um, so I found a lot of interesting information there for my project. Um, that's about it.